Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Only Bio. Presenting up the important points from the chapter classification of animals that is kingdom animalia and these points I am presenting up on demand of few of the viewers. These points will help you to clear your NEET, CET, KVPY, Olympiad and this will also help the CBC, ICSC and the IGCSE students. The terms of the points discussed here are derived from MCQs that have appeared in the various national or state level competitive exams. Questions are framed from these terms or points either in similar or modified forms. These are beneficial as they will help you to master the important topics in limited span of time, frame some expected questions, do effective revision and make your own synopsis. The more MCQs you solve, the better you understand and you get confident. Daily practice of few minutes with me can certainly help you to master the topic, so stay tuned. So let's begin with the most awaited important points from Kingdom Animalia from 1 to 20. Point number 1. Aristotle. He is known as the father of zoology. He had written up a book called as Historia Animalium. He is also known as the father of ancient taxonomy. Next, Aristotle classified the animals into two groups on the basis of the color of the blood as anaima and inaima. Next, anaima includes those animals which don't have red blood or in which RBCs are absent. Example, invertebrates like the sponges, nidaria, mollusca, arthropoda and echinodermata. Inaima are the animals which have red blood and this group includes all vertebrates and it has been further divided into two subgroups. First, vivipara which includes animals which give birth to young ones, example mammals. And second, ovipara, which includes animals which lay eggs, example pieces, amphibians, reptiles, aves, etc. Point number five. Even though all the animals are multicellular, all of them do not exhibit the same pattern of organization. Protoplasmic level of organization is seen in protozoans wherein the unicellular body performs all the biological activities. Next, cellular level of organization is the one in which the cells are arranged as loose cell aggregates and division of labor occurs among the cells. In other words, tissues are absent in them and the best example is sponges. Next, tissue level of organization is seen in cylindrates and telophores in which the cells performing the same function are arranged into tissues. Next, organ level of organization. Here, tissues are grouped together to form organs, each specialized for a particular function. Platyhelminthus and other higher phyla show organ level of organization. Next, that is point number 10, organ system of organization. Organs associate or organize to form functional systems and each system is concerned with a specific physiological function. This pattern is called organ system level of organization. Animals like annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms and chordates are the examples of organ system of organization. Next, organ systems in different groups of animals exhibit various patterns of complexities. Next, the digestive system is of two types, incomplete digestive system and complete digestive system. Next, the digestive system in Platyhelminthus has only a single opening to the outside of the body that serves as both mouth and anus and is hence called as incomplete digestive system. Point number 14. A complete digestive system has two openings namely mouth and anus. Next, the circulatory system may be of two types namely open, 
circulatory system and closed circulatory system. Next, in open type of circulation, the blood is pumped out of the heart and the cells and the tissues are directly bathed into it. Examples, arthropoda, mollusks, echinoderms, hemichordates and some lower chordates like the tunicates. Point number 17. In closed type of blood circulation, the blood is circulated through series of vessels of varying diameters that is arteries, veins and capillaries. Examples, annelids, chordates, cephalopod mollusks, vertebrates, etc. Close system of circulation is more advantageous as the flow of the fluid can be more precisely regulated. Point number 19. Asymmetry. When any plane that passes through the center does not divide the body of the animals into two equal halves, most of the sponges are asymmetrical. Next, radial symmetry. When any plane passing through the central axis of the body divides the animal into two identical halves, we call it as radial symmetry. Example. Cylindrates, tenophores, and the adult echinoderms. Friends, I'm sure you will follow this series. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel and keep studying with me. Thank you.